Hi, I'm Gary Mack, and welcome to another edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. Still no baseball, but we've got Rich Baxter. He's on the ground. He's in Florida, got down here a day too late. He just got down there the day they closed the camps, but he's been spending a week wandering around Florida a little bit, visiting some camps, and if you're watching the video, he's got a very special tour as much as we could do, of the Yankee facility. So check it out. Rich is going to be with me in just a minute right here on a new edition of the Baseball Talk Radio Show. Hello. Hello from, well, you're from sunny Florida. I'm not. I'm going to take you for a walk right onto the fields here, right on the, you know, the ground. Okay. Let's, let's check it out. It's quite a complex. Is it? Yeah. yeah so okay. this this I is mean, our show, I guess, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So <laughs> you want to start it whenever? I think we already to. started it. I'll I'll do something. Uh... Little edit. Yeah. Okay. Well, pretty amazing that we are uh, down in Florida. It is Rich. He is in Tampa, Florida, at the uh, home of the hated Yankees. But uh, to show you that he's down there, there you go. He's at the spring training facility of the Yankees. He's hit the uh, Phillies already, I guess, and... uh, Rich got down there a day too late. Yes, yes. <laughs> About a day day delayed on my long journey down here. But uh, as you can see, Gary, uh, even though they might be a, a nemesis in New York, they've got a first class, first class operation here in Tampa. Well, no doubt, no doubt, and uh, you know what? It's still interesting to see and and to go there. Uh, All things considered, have you been enjoying yourself down there? Yes, been having a wonderful time. I've toured uh, about four minor league stadiums in South Florida here. This one takes the cake is probably the best that I've seen so far. I've been to the Phillies, of course, uh, with my Phillies blog. Uh-huh. I actually came down here to see the Phillies, but uh, also went out to the Pirate City in Bradenton, Florida. It's about an hour drive from here south, and uh, that was very nice, very nice facility as well. Um, and I went up to Toronto, uh, to Dunedin, Florida, another about an hour drive from here or so on the coast. And mm-hmm. Very nice facility as well. And that's an older facility, I think, right? The Dunedin? Yeah, they just did like a $5 million refurb to that facility. Um, from what I understand, it is an older facility, and you can still see some of the evidence of that. It's, it's not on par of this at all. Right, right. Um, Check out my blog, fightingphillies.com. In the next couple of days, I'll have a big article on it with pictures and all. Okay. Uh, yeah. With the different facilities that I checked out down here. But uh, the weather's so gorgeous, I hate to come home. <laughs> well, you may be in the mood for a culture. I mean, you may be in, in culture shock when you come back home. Um, I don't know. What is the feeling down there with this whole coronavirus? Up here, it is not uh, in a good state. I'm hoping you can get even get into the state at this point in time uh, because New Jersey has been locked down. New York is in a lockdown. Everything is in a lockdown over here. We are in uh, self-imposed quarantine. Luckily, I am retired, as is my wife, so we can do that. Um, uh-huh. but, uh, have you contacted work or anything? What have they told you? Um, I was just speaking to a coworker of mine and 
business is going on as usual for the most part. Um, I live in the South Jersey area. Casinos closed down recently mm -hmm. uh, within the last day. I have a friend that's uh, working for the casinos and yeah, they're all out of work right now. So they're collecting unemployment, hopefully. And, you know, it's the service industries that are going to hit hardest with this uh, virus with the closings. And um, it's just a terrible thing. Like you said, it's a, you know, an evolving situation and something that's always changing. That's for sure. It's, it's, it's definitely a fluid situation as well. And, uh, it, it, it's just pretty amazing that, um, you know, we have been shut down as much as we have restaurants, uh, movie theaters, Broadway has been shut down. Everything is essentially shut down. None of the restaurants are allowed to have takeout. So, uh, you know, DoorDash and Grubhub and all of those, I think are probably going to do a booming business now, um, it's hard to find food on the shelves. Uh, we stocked up. We were fortunate. And uh, uh, my opinion is wait a week or two and there'll be plenty of stuff on the shelves. People will uh, have gorged themselves by then and, and loaded up and uh, you should be able to get stuff. But um, uh, are you stocked up in your house when you get back home or will you be uh, calling yeah, DoorDash? Yeah. <laughs> I've got plenty of uh, supplies, so to speak, stocked up, food and things like that. Um, so it shouldn't be a problem for me. I feel bad for people that, you know, may not have had the opportunity to stock up, quote unquote, and now they're unemployed. So it's going to be a, a community effort to keep everybody afloat here. I understand the government's thinking about uh, sending a payment out to everybody somewhere and on the order of a thousand dollars so uh -huh. that'll help but uh, yeah baseball has taken a back seat to all this for sure um, there is life though around the Yankee facility that's reassuring I know that Phillies organization has really closed the gates of the stadiums, uh, the will call windows for any refunds. There, there's been nobody at Philly's property here in, in Clearwater, just about a 10 mile drive from here. But on my first day here, I was able to go into the gift shop for the Yankees. So that was nice. But then they came out with another directive that they thought everything should be closed from the MLB. So that lasted one day, <laughs> but uh, the facility here, they make it nice for people that are in the area. You're on vacation, you came down here for this. You can at least come to the stadium, check it out, walk around the grounds, which you can see are, are very pristine if you're watching the video mm -hmm. version of the show. And they actually have the bathrooms open for the folks, too, that stop in here, which is very nice. Um, that's why I'm... Tipping my cap to the Yankees. Uh, another indication that they're very first-class organization. Well, without a doubt, they've been, of course, uh, t uh, Tampa was the home of Steinbrenner and uh, moved them down there. Apparently, it was 25 years ago I saw the sign. I, I thought it was fairly newer than that, but they've made a lot of renovations in the last couple of years to that stadium i remember reading about that a couple of years ago that they uh, did some major renovations there and uh you know what it's it's an investment but it's an investment for not only your major league team but it's also an investment for your minor league team the tampa yankees are down there um, in the Florida State League, so why not have them have a first-class facility as well or as first-class as you can get it, you know? Um, you might as well do it. It, it. it They do make some money on the spring training, and as you say, people travel down there specifically for spring training and stuff, so why not make the journey, uh, uh, you know, enjoyable? Absolutely, and 
uh, the first two days I was down here, um, the press was still covering. The Japanese press was here and some U.S. based press was here on site at the Yankees facility. They've since left um, now that there's officially nothing supposed to be going on here at this facility. But, uh, yeah, it was amazing to see that. Also at the Toronto facility, there were some people working out on the field. That was the only player players that I was able to see while I was down here working out on the field, having a catch down there in Toronto, uh, a couple of Japanese press down there as well on that day. But, of course, uh, that was right before they announced uh, the closure, so to speak, of all these facilities down here. Well, I know, yes, they, they announced the closure, but I know then they, they left it. I think, sir, you can... Yeah. I, I read somewhere that the Mets are the gym is open for working out, and I think some of the and for rehabbing injuries, and uh, everything else is closed. So, uh, it it's uh, it's a as we said before, it's a fluid situation. Who knows when we're going to see baseball? I mean, uh, now they've pushed it back eight weeks, as Rich is touring. Uh, the Yankee facility in Tampa, Florida, if you're watching the video, uh, and which we encourage you to go to our YouTube channel and watch the video. Um, is that inside the stadium or is that one of the practice fields, Rich, as far as you know? This, this is one of the practice fields. Mm -hmm. um, and I just spoke that they had the bathrooms open, but they just closed the bathrooms. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh and I suspect they may be closing this off, possibly as well. We'll see. But yeah, this is where they have the practices. You can come down here, watch the players working out. Um, bleacher seating over here. It really is something. It's uh, my first trip down here for spring training. And, you know, with the cancellation. I was able to travel to other facilities and check it out. So I didn't make it a complete loss uh -huh. down here. And even though I didn't see much baseball going on, uh, I got the lay of the land for, you know, maybe a future trip down here and check it out. But as you said, yeah, the MLB pushing the season back now to, I believe, is it May Ninth or tenth is what I heard. Roughly, yeah, and and even that's in flux, and we don't know if that's. There was no explanation to whether or not that was like uh, planning on opening day at that time, or planning on calling people back for you know uh, for a quickie short and spring training. Uh, no explanation on that date, what it what it actually means, but um, I don't think anybody knows at this point in time. Yeah, if you go over to my website, I did get a email on the road, as I usually do from a gentleman down there that is involved with the sports books. Believe it or not, Vegas has a line on when the MLB will come back. <laughs> you can bet on that. <laughs> Um, they were saying June 1st as a date. Will the MLB be back in business by then? And you could bet yes or no. So uh, interesting time there. And uh, apparently heat and humidity are good to stop the spread of this virus. So as we chug towards uh, summer, that should be a good thing. But in the Northeast, it's going to take a while to get the summer. Down here in Florida, it's 85, but the humidity is low for now. And uh, apparently that's going to help when uh, the humidity kicks up finally. Yeah, and uh, I, I don't see, you know, they're talking about a number of different things. They were talking about maybe playing the World Series in a neutral site. I mean, if need be, then do it. Play in November or December, you know. Um, you can play in in Miami. You can play in Tampa. They're indoors. You can play in Houston. It's an indoor facility. Um, you can play in California if you wish. There are enough, I think, options to really not have to squeeze this 
season in, uh, you know, maybe cut some of the games, go to 100 games or something, depending on how many we're going to be missing. But if you got to play longer, play longer, and play, but play it in a neutral site if you have to. Yeah, I know it's a pain, but, you know, you have the facilities available. Why not use them? Yes, you can. They can play right down here in their spring training homes uh, once the virus gets uh, to a certain point. Uh, they didn't want to go north. Uh, the concern right now is, of course, probably for the players. They don't want the players to uh, spread that amongst themselves even. so. Uh, but once that gets out of the way, I've heard different scenarios of a 100-game season, that sort of thing has been bannered about on talk radio, um, which would be a sprint to the finish, so to speak. Um, that would benefit a lot of the bigger teams. I don't know how much it would benefit a, a small market team, but you know we would have baseball uh, in a shortened season, so it's going to cut a lot of those games that may not mean much, so to speak. Yeah, and it, there's been suggestions about cutting uh, interleague play out this year, but with 15 teams in the league, there's going to have to be a, an interleague game somewhere along the line. Um, maybe they should move a team over to uh, one of the leagues, you know, uh, like move Milwaukee back to the American League or something like that and – play a balanced schedule and, and uh, cut out into league play. Um, maybe something they, you know, they should look back at doing that, that they did before. That was probably a mistake, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe Houston back to the national league, who knows? Uh, but uh, it, it seems all peace and calm down there now. Uh, but uh, two Yankee minor leaguers have tested positive for the um, for the coronavirus, so I wouldn't recommend using the bathrooms down there just in case. <laughs> well, yeah, the, apparently the minor leaguers weren't here at this facility, um, but yeah, it's it's a scary situation for sure. One that's uh, changing day by day. And um, health is uh, the paramount right now. We can think about the season and all when that comes around closer to starting. It's just a shame because a lot of the players are getting into a certain groove with their scheduling, waking up in the morning, going to the stadium, working out, playing a game, uh -huh. or getting prepared as they normally do. That was the big talk down here as well. Uh, getting thrown off of their schedule again now that it's uh, the season's been postponed for a certain amount of time. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, here life goes on for, for normal as, as much as possible around the stadium. There's deliveries coming in. As you can see, if you're watching the video, FedEx came in. Uh, UPS has dropped here and Amazon has dropped here. So, uh, And the Phillies have uh, loaded up their trailer and went back north with it. So mm -hmm. uh, it didn't take them long to get out of town. But they, <laughs> like I said, they closed down right upon hearing from the MLB that right. to pull the plug. There was just nobody around that complex. So mm -hmm. it's a ghost town. Uh, whereas there is some life still down here at the uh, Yankees facility in Tampa. And, Rich, you look pretty comfortable down there. Any uh, uh, d Do any job hunting when you were down there? <laughs> Jobs are plentiful down here, uh, that's for sure. Um, and it's very nice weather, as you can see. Uh, yeah. 80s all week. It's been above temperature. The average temperature down here around this time is in the mid to high 70s. But I've had 84, 85. Good beach weather. Beaches are still open for now down in the Clearwater area and north and south of there. So it's something that's 
there's plenty to keep you amused down here. Um, I know up north it, it seems like um, it's sort of a, uh, a barren, uh, you know, lock yourself in type situation. But down here it's a little bit different. There's, there's a little bit more activity, I guess, due to the weather. Well, there has been some complaints in the media about that, that people have been ignoring the social distancing, uh, that they've been, you know, posting on social media. They, they're in bars and out and on uh, some places are on spring break and uh, people are not happy about that. But I guess it depends upon where you are, you know, uh, and and what the states are regulating and if they're not closing the bars down there or if they're not closing the beaches and, you know, they're there to use. Um, but, you know, who knows if it'll get worse or, or get better. Yeah, a lot of bars down here that are strictly bars uh, have been asked to close down. If you have food service at a bar, they are allowing you to stay open down here for now as uh, it continues to unfold. There's different uh, regulations being proposed all the time down here from uh, possibly closing the beaches. That would kind of be a mistake as long as you keep your distance at the beach. I don't see a big problem, and it's not an airborne as much illness as uh, if you keep a certain amount of distance away from mm -hmm. somebody, but we'll see what the experts, quote unquote, um, recommend. And uh, as you said, you know, that, that word, social distancing, I hadn't been paying attention too much to the media. A friend of mine was <laughs> using that term to me a few days ago, and yeah, they're ramming it down people's throats they they want you to maintain your distance from someone and i'm already sick of that word social distancing <laughs> that phrase well it's another phrase that you know they we come up with now in these uh these times and uh it it it, it, it kind of makes sense um uh but there's a lot of disagreement still out there uh I know I've read articles about golf where people, a lot of people playing golf, even up here, because we've had a couple of nice days. Uh, still a little chilly, but, you know, you can get out there and play, and yet some people are very upset about that, that people are out playing golf. Uh, but uh, it is out in the open, golfers feel. Uh, they can keep a social distance. They don't have to, uh, if they, you know, you can... Uh, make your own little rules that if you're within a few inches of the cup, it's in the cup. You don't have to putt the ball. You don't have to touch the flag, lead the flag in, things like that. Uh, you know, if if you're walking the course, you really don't have to worry too much about sanitizing everything. Uh, and, of course, there are guidelines. Keep your hands sanitized. Bring wipes. Wipe your clubs down just to make sure in case it touches something. Um, right. It's just a matter of being safe. Now, you will be going on a plane this afternoon. Are you concerned about anything on the, the airplane at all? Not specifically. I have um, my Clorox wipes at hand, so I'm prepared once I get on the plane to clean the area as I did when I came down here. And uh, I even had a seatmate that I had on the way down. We shared wipes. So she, she saw I had the Clorox wipes, quote unquote. She said, you got the little ones. <laughs> I said, yeah, here, have, have a couple, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, you, you mentioned sanitize um, a couple of seconds ago. Right here at the uh, New York Yankees team store which I went into a couple of days ago when I came down for the first time, uh, the store was still open and they had, believe it or not, hand sanitizer in Yankee small dispensers. I think it was about a three ounce container uh -huh. and you can't find that stuff anywhere down here. Yeah. Uh, I looked at it and I was like, hmm. you know, it was nine ninety nine, <laughs> and, uh, 
I didn't buy it, but on hindsight, you can't find it anywhere. So uh, that would have been a great memento to have for yeah. the trip. <laughs> it had a whole bowl of it sitting right, you know, right there for anybody to buy. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's tough to find the uh, wipes, sanitize, hand sanitizer, Purell, uh, toilet paper, paper towels, and water. People are hoarding. I, God only knows why. I I'm amazed at the water uh, that people are hoarding. I don't know whether they think it's going to hit the water supply to coronavirus or what. But bottled water is uh, selling out, and uh, in toilet paper, I I don't know. There's there's no signs of diarrhea. If you get the coronavirus, I don't know where, where the toilet paper either. But uh, you know, be that as it may, people always seem to get crazy in these kind of things, and yeah. And I'm I'm showing on the video here. There's a couple of gentlemen walking the field. I'm not quite sure they may not be players. Uh, they are dressed in athletic wear, um, walking track at one of the practice fields here. They may in fact be players. I can't at this distance see who they are, but um, certainly I haven't seen anybody on these fields dressed like them before they could be working out uh for the yankees i'm not quite sure you know and it's a you it's another good point too well with the players you know it, it's a tough decision what do you do do you go home to your family do you stay with the team uh do you continue to work out uh we all want to be with family but is that a good idea at this point in time, especially if you may or may not have been exposed to it, do you want to go home and give it to your family? Um, a lot of things to, to have to consider. Yes, absolutely. A lot of the players were uh, in doubt on what to do uh, right after the MLB quote-unquote told the teams to, uh, to lock it down and and shut it down for the most part uh, for play anyway. A lot of guys just sort of assumed that they were done and got in their vehicles and left. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and others, of course, the Yankees voted with another team to stay in their spring training facility uh, area for getting, uh, you know, not getting away from the game. Uh, trying to stay on schedule, so to speak. And um, it, it looks that apparently a few may still be down here um, walking the track here at one of the practice fields. Not sure if you can see it from this distance, Gary, but they're walking yeah. uh, two, two people there. You can only assume that they're players. Mm -hmm. um, look like they're having a conversation uh, walking around the field here. So... Uh, that's the story down at at the Yankee Complex in Tampa. I'm under a shady tree here. It's getting a little warm, but uh, how's everything up north uh, as far as any baseball news filtering uh, out of the pipeline? No, nothing at all. Uh, not not uh, you know not a word. Uh, as you said, the the last thing we heard was the eight weeks. And there has not been a peep. Now, it's it's possible that they are in negotiations, the players' union, the owners. You know, they all could be talking to figure out what this mess is going to be. I, I think they're in the same position that uh, that we all are in now. Not that they don't want to come up with a plan. It's just that they don't know what the government is going to come up with. And... Uh, you know, to give you an example, they had talked about in the beginning when they first canceled the start of the season for two weeks, they had talked about maybe playing games in front of empty stadiums, uh, just playing it. But then some cities came out with restrictions against crowds of 50. And, you know, you got uh, what is the roster now? 26, 27. They, they increased the roster. 
between the teams, you got over 50. So you're violating it right away. Never mind umpires and media and uh, press. So uh, you still got to have security, that kind of thing. So um, I think that's that's where the confusion is coming in now because the teams don't know even know what to do. I don't think they would mind playing in front of empty stadiums to get the games in. But the uh, again, um, with the limitations put on by the local governments, uh, New York City put on a 50-person limit. Uh, the federal government has recommended that people do not meet in groups larger than 10. So... Um, that kind of puts a kibosh on a lot of things. And we're looking at the Yankees uh, spring training facility, Rich is down there. And uh, if you're watching the video, of course, to, to what we believe is players there, maybe that's uh, Gene Carlos Stanton and Aaron judge working out the uh, rich. Uh, doesn't look like judge to me or Gene Carlo, but um, again, I, I haven't really followed the Yankees too closely. Um, one gentleman is bald-headed. The other guy's got uh, brown hair. Um, but, yeah, not recognizable players. And I have a terrible time, most of the time, recognizing uh, players in general. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would have to say that these are definitely a couple players here at the Yankee facility taking a stroll probably after a workout. As you said, the gym is still open for them uh, to come work out and, and stay in shape. And it's important that these players do stay in shape for when the uh, call is made to pick it back up because there's probably not going to be too much time for training uh, once they make the call. i probably give them 10 days to uh, to get conditioned, I would imagine, before starting any uh, meaningful games. But um, that's another something that they're going to have to discuss, you know. A lot of these players, especially pitchers, have to keep throwing. They have to keep that arm going and, um, you know, keep keep their momentum going, so to speak. Uh, their bodies are tuned to, to pitch a certain amount of days with some rest in between, and now that's been all thrown off. Right. And and they their arms have been getting stretched out. They've been getting to the point where the, where the starters have been going three or four innings, and now they're going to be, you know, now that's going to stop. So uh, we'll have to see what they do with that. But you're right. They're going to have some kind of – going to have to have something, two weeks, three weeks maybe even, of a spring training to get it. And I think you're going to see um, – we may even see more expanded rosters early in the season whenever the season starts to accommodate mostly pitchers because I don't see guys going more than four or five innings to start off with early in the year, especially uh, with the lack of spring training. Yeah, they need that time to uh, be prepared uh, to get ready. Uh, speaking of getting ready, they're, they're keeping the field real nice here at the uh, practice fields. Of course, I haven't been into the stadium, but uh, practice fields are pristine down here, as did I see the uh, groundskeepers at the Pirate City area. Uh, still keeping manicured playing surfaces for the players and uh, keeping their jobs as well. So that's a, another important aspect of you know, the economy down here, mm -hmm. uh, baseball provides a lot of jobs for peace, people. As you can see, somebody operating one of the field equipment um, tractors in the distance there at Yankee Stadium. And people are still employed. It's very important, you know, to keep a source of income coming in uh, for these folks as well. Yeah, uh, it. It's very important in this time now that they uh, continue on with that. And, of course, they want to keep it up because they don't know when the players could be back. And, and 
Um, they do keep it up most of the year. As I said, for the Florida State League, they all have teams, and, and most of them play out of the spring training facilities now. So uh, it behooves them to uh, keep the fields in good shape and, and naturally for the uh, minor league facilities. Yes, and uh, if you're watching the video, here comes a couple players again going around the field. Uh, again, not too sure who they are here at the Yankee Stadium Complex. And no press here, so I guess, you know, the press has taken a vacation and a, a pause for the cause from covering the game. Uh, no photographers on site. A few people have arrived uh, as we were doing the podcast here. You can see in the distance there, touring the facility here at the home for the Yankees in Tampa. And uh, as I said, what a beautiful facility this is down here for the Yankees. Well, it sounds like you're getting a little wind there now. And uh, there you go. There's somebody walking behind you. Uh, You are... uh, off to the airport soon. You'll be flying home. So uh, I guess we'll end it at this and, and have a safe trip. Godspeed. And uh, please be careful and sanitize and all of that kind of stuff. And we'll talk to you uh, soon from uh, your usual spot. <laughs> Thanks, Gary Mack. Can't wait to uh, for baseball to start up again. Some more news coming out of uh, the game. It's been a, uh, a big loss as far as um, what we had just a week ago, 10 days ago this time. Uh, what a, a big loss in a lot of people's lives this, this is. So, as you said, and hope our listeners do well out there. Practice the, uh, the safe, uh, all the safeties recommended. Cleaning the hands, number one. Um, staying at a certain distance from people um, and all that. So we'll talk to you again on the next edition of the Baseball Radio Show. Gary, it was a pleasure to talk with you as well. Always, Rich, and thank you for the tour of the the facility and uh, very lovely. And uh, we'll see you again the next time, as Rich said, on the Baseball Talk Radio Show. So until then... Keep healthy, sanitize, wash your hands, and, uh, you know, stay away from people. (laughs) And and stay optimistic, as you like to say. That's right, and keep the faith. (laughs) And we'll talk to you again on the next Baseball Talk radio show.